Good evening. So this is the diagram of the fusion progress that we've done in the last 30 years or so. So in red dot is the fusion performance. And you can see that in 30 years, between 1970 and 2000, the performance of the fusion machine that those little nerdy physicists are working with went about 10,000 times. Now, this is actually the same growth rate as the number of transistors that we can put on a chip, which is the very famous Mohr's law. So this dot here is the jet. It's the Joint European and Taurus. In 1997, this machine produced 16 megawatt of fusion energy, but it requires 17 megawatt of heating to do that. So that's not quite there. But as you can see, we, we improved the fusion by 10,000, so we're almost there. We're pretty close to this sort of big square on the top that is enough to do energy. And this machine, when it comes online, will produce 500 megawatt of power with only 50 megawatt of heating. So this one will really make power. Hello, it's good to be here today, and I'm talking about energy. So this is, can be shown in a uh, science space on a plot like this. So we think of fusion as uh, how much power out over how much it takes to run. We call that number Q. And so for the last 60 years that we've been studying this technology, it's been a race to higher and higher levels, closer and closer to more power out than in. That's sort of the threshold where now things become, you could see a, a commercial pathway. It's no longer just an experiment. It has a, a pathway to becoming useful. And on the right of this plot is the other, the combination of all the things you need in order to get more power out than in. More power out than in lives in the upper right. Notice it's a logarithmic plot on both axes. So that means this covers a huge amount of physical space. I said we had to get the plasma very hot. That's on the x-axis. The unit of 10 there is 100 million degrees. So the 100 million degrees is so hot that plasma physicists had to invent a smaller unit. Um, and then on the, the y-axis is the other two things you need. Confinement, so how well you insulate it, and density, how much stuff you have. And um, all those data points are machines that have been built around the world by national labs, by um, small companies across the last decades. And what you can see is that we've actually gotten pretty close to Q greater than 1. In fact, the blue points that are in the upper right there are at Q of 0.7. There's a machine um, across the, the channel in the UK that's gotten to 0.7. There's a machine in Japan that's, that lives up there. Um, and then there's lots of other things that we've tried. Um, and, and that's all contributed to this very large body of knowledge of fusion energy, plasma physics, um, understanding what we need to make a power source. So in some ways, you'd say, OK, we're, we're pretty close um, on the science, but we've, we've stopped a little short. combining is fusing and releasing this tremendous amount of energy. And if we look at how much fusion energy we're making with all of these machines, not just the ones I'm showing you, but the, all the other machines that are being built and have experiments running all over the world, what you see is that the amount of fusion energy over time has increased by 100 billion times. And I've compared that to how fast our computers are going. And you can see that Fusion is proceeding at a pace even faster than how, how fast all of our computer chip manufacturing is going.
if I go out to the ocean, take a liter of water, I take a little bit of hydro, a special hydrogen isotope out of that water, put the other liter back into the ocean so I don't damage the ocean, and I take those two isotopes, and I want to put them together. I want to fuse them together. Each liter would be equivalent to about 200, 350 gallons of gas, uh, liters of gasoline. And with that, we'd be able to power all of Italy. Electricity, transportation, heat, industry, everything. But the energy content stored in the oceans would last humanity for 100 billion years. That's like seven times the age of the universe. So it's just a perpetual motion machine. And if you've looked in our progress since the beginning, we built small tokamaks, bigger tokamaks, bigger tokamaks, and we basically doubled our performance every 1.5 years. Up to the point of around the year 2000, we were able to create a reaction where the amount of energy we put in equals the amount of energy out. We call it break even. At this point, uh, this was achieved, by the way, in JET, the Joint European Tokamak, where the Europeans have pulled together to build this tokamak. At this point, we've decided to work together in a large environment where all nations are coming together, mainly Russia, China, US, Japan, North Korea, South Korea, uh, India, and Europe, are combining resources to build ITER. That's where I work. It's in the south of France. And our goal is to build a machine that performs 10 times better. So we have one watt going in equals 10 watts out. I would like to conclude. Um, I would like to make a case here for fusion. Fusion is clean. It has no CO2 emission. Keyword climate change. Uh, no long-term waste, different from fission. It is abundant, enough fusion fuel for millions of years, and it's accessible to everybody. And so nobody owns the fusion fuel, which is very important, of course. Um, it's safe, there are no catastrophic failures possible, and it's economic. So it's, the machines are expensive, but the fuel cost is essentially zero. Now, the fuel that uh, you need for fusion, you can extract it from the ocean. So you could extract the fuel from the ocean for one thousandth of a cent per kilowatt hour. And now, if the whole planet was run on fusion, there would be enough fuel in the ocean for two billion years. So there's enough fuel, and it's nice, and it's clean, and it's fantastic. It's an experimental device, and then from that, we decided to build, we want to build a thing called DEMO, a demonstration reactor that would actually produce electricity. Now, that would be a very large donut, about 20 meters in diameter. Now, if you notice on this curve, we were going straight up, and then suddenly it flats. Why? Well, as you big builder tokamaks, it takes longer. It's more complicated, it's more sophisticated, there's more stronger forces involved, and it, we need more money. 